Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech doing a quick video here on the state of standard after Return to Ravnica. Now, I usually don't do metagame videos, but I'm doing one here because several people have requested it, and I'm curious to see what the response is from the community. Also, the cute little image there in the middle is from the game metagame, which is a card game about games. Kick-ass little game. Before I go too far though, I do want to caution people, if they want to get better at magic, metagame is one of the last things you should look at. For a little bit of a chess analogy here, it's kind of like studying openings, when what you really need to do is study tactics, study the fundamental of the game if you want to get better at it. It is true that metagame might give you one or two quick wins, but it's not transferable skills that are necessarily useful for you for playing magic long term. If you want to build those skills, learn the basics of the game, and then look at what cards are being played and why, or the metagame analysis as kind of a secondary, or an on the whereas the sprinkles on top of a Sunday. There are several different decks to beat in the current environment. First, you have to be prepared for aggro. There are several different aggro decks that are very good. The first few weeks of Return to Ravnica, zombies definitely dominated the environment, powered by very cheap creatures, some rancor, and good removal. Red Deck Wins has even been coming out recently with a faster version than Zombies and enough burn to remove your opponent's zombies from the games entirely. And Green White Humans is even faster than those two decks with double striking, Rancor, and some cards like Champion of the Parish that can get insanely large, insanely early. Although, I don't think any of these aggro decks are really what is defining the format at this point. You've got a lot of mid-range decks that are able to deal with the aggro decks pretty easily that incorporate things like Olivia, Thrag Tusk, maybe even Snapcasters for additional advantage that are able to stabilize the game pretty easily. And you also have reanimator decks that are able to go over the top and beat your aggro decks pretty consistently with a pretty good amount of life gain. There's also a strong tap-out control deck out there that uses several cards like Supreme Verdict and Chase Architect of Thought to get card advantage quickly. The last deck, which is often confused with a mid-range deck, is the deck that I like the most in the current environment, which is a tempo deck, and I'm going to focus on that a little bit later. But the current metagame is decided a lot by one major creature, and that is Thrag Tusk. Now, I'm not bringing this up just because I nailed it when it came to predicting the best card out of M13. This card is just amazing. Thrag Tusk has the ability to turn games around and stop aggro along with his little brother, Centaur Healer. It's very difficult for aggro decks to do 30 or 40 damage, which you can easily get your life up to with a few healers, Thrag Tusks, and Restoration Angels. But in order to play right now, you have to be able to deal with this card in some way, which doesn't just mean playing Thrag Tusk yourself, because then the games move into this long, drawn-out, drawish situation where you run out of time and lots of people have Thrag Tusk on the board. The best ways to beat Thrag Tusk is find some way to avoid it. The zombie decks have tried Crippling Blight, although recently Restoration Angels have been added to the Thrag Tusk decks to deal with the Crippling Blight. Uh, Spectral Flight, though, is probably my favorite at this point, or Thundermont Hellkite just going over his head. Counterspells also work extremely well. There's been an entire article written on Beating Thrag Tusk by Todd Anderson over at Star City Games. I recommend checking out if you're a premier member there. But, but you need to prepare specifically for Thrag Tusk if you're going to play in competitive magic right now. I also got a piece of bonus tech here that no one seems to be pointing out. I was recently involved in a game with my questionable Niapod deck turned into a Return from Ravnica Niapod with no pod. So, to be honest, the deck wasn't amazing, but got into an interesting board state where my opponent had both Thrag Tusk and Veraska the Unseen out, and I had two cards in hand, one of which I was saving specifically for Thrag Tusk so I could get through last few points of damage. But after they dropped Veraska, I knew I was going to need to do something even better. And that was play my Zealous Conscripts. This card is just amazing in the current environment. Now there's several things that you could do in this situation, but the play that I found was by far the most fun. 
I grabbed the Thrag Tusk, throwing the Zealous Conscript at my opponent, who was pretty unhappy, and throwing the Thrag Tusk at the Veraska that had just been plus one. This not only wiped okay. both of my opponent's creatures, but it left me with the Beast Token, so I got a, a three for one out of Zealous and still had six power on the board. This creature is incredible in Zealous Conscripts. It stops a lot of the tapped out strategies by allowing you to grab their planeswalkers and use them against them. Or if your planeswalkers have been tapped down with Tamiyo, it allows you the opportunity to untap your own creature and throw your creature at them. Also works extremely well against Olivia and even opposing Thundermaw Hellkites. I'm shocked that this guy isn't seeing more play at this point as he's perfect for the tempo and aggro decks that are being stopped by these higher casting cost permanents. The other card that I'm thoroughly amazed with in the current environment is Geist of St. Traff. Now everybody knew that this was good in an environment that included a lot of cheap clones, but now that those guys are gone, this guy is incredible. The new clone out there is just terrible in trying to remove him and is no real threat to Geist. Some of the control decks have just been adding Geist to try to legend rule out your Geist. Geist is an incredible guy though in the current environment. Although he does have a little bit of trouble with Thrag Tusk, you've got a plan for Thrag Tusk to make Geist really unbeatable currently. I prefer Spectral Flight and Rune Chanter's Pikes as ways to get through Thrag Tusk. On top of Geist, I recommend adding some other cards that give you massive card advantage and quick powerful threats, along with ways to deal with the Planeswalkers that are ever so popular right now. I also recommend backing them, him up with Counterspells at this point, because Counterspells give you the ability to stall the game for one or two turns while Geist finishes your opponent off. I've also got Azorius Charm here as an honorable mention, as it works really well in the tempo strategy. This isn't about controlling the game, it's about doing some damage quickly before the over-the-top strategies are able to take hold. The other thing really interesting about the current metagame is that Cavern of Souls, which could be beating these counterspell decks, is not being played. A lot of the decks are avoiding Cavern of Souls because of their diverse mana bases, and as long as Cavern of Souls does not see a play, time is ripe to play counterspells, take control, and beat your opponent down before they're able to get their over-the-top strategy in place. Thanks, this has been Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech looking at the state of standard after Return to Ravnica.